Britannica uh, publication, uh, Spurs Express actually called them very reliable. I uh, don't have a tear for them or anything, but uh, the breaking news is Tottenham have now made their first offer for Mikel Damsgaard. The bid is higher than 20 million euros and Sampdoria want around 40 million euros. Yeah, so this is another one which uh, we're going to be negotiating t- for, for, a, for a budget unless um, obviously we get the cane money in and then we'll probably push the boat out a bit. I don't think we're going to be high, going higher than probably between 25 and 30 million euros for him, I would imagine. Do you think Sampdoria will meet us halfway? I mean, he's, he's still got a few years left of his contract, doesn't he, Damsgaard, yeah. I think. So um, I don't think they're in any rush. He's 20 years of age. I don't, I don't know if they're in there any sort of money problems. They no, are in Serie A and obviously not in Europe and stuff like that. So you never I know. I've no idea. Um, I, yeah, I'm not sure whether they would rather the money or not. Um, but I think and when it comes to Damsgaard, his, given his age, um, he's got three years left on his deal. Um, there is no reason to take it like Spurs there's no reason to take anything less than exa- exactly what they're demanding right now yeah and uh, we look at the end of the day when it comes to Romero we, we had to meet Atlanta's price they didn't budge mm-hmm. and um, I think uh, maybe um, Sampdoria will see that and think we're not going to budge either but if we are going in for a dams guard obviously it means that we rate him highly uh, mm-hmm. Fabio Paratici rates him highly um, and we have heard that, you know, if he wants his play, he doesn't mind spending a few pounds, a few euros over the uh, over what they're willing to spend. Uh, we did it with Christian Romero. Do you see us doing it again with Damsgaard? Sorry, what, spending? Spending a bit over than what we wanted to spend. I think it's less likely with Damsgaard just because, just because he's more of a player who, um, despite having a very good Euros, he's more of a player probably that has... Um, potential to be good rather than a player like Romero who we're convinced by so obviously I think we we've we've scouted him and we've looked at him close and we we think this guy can be a good very good player but whether we're willing to like completely overplay for I think when it comes to like overplaying for a player this is that these are usually players who you you who are established and you 100% know if you bring this guy in there is very little risk that he's not going to be the player you need I think with Damsgaard the risk is a bit higher than that just Mm. because of his age and um, you know hasn't been playing um, he's been playing for Sampdoria but I don't like even last season I'm sure he had a good season but I don't think he was like I don't think one of the best in Serie A or anything I don't think he's um, he's had like a out and out season starting every single game I don't Mm. think he's had that in his career yet Oh, having said that, he did play 35 games for Sampdoria last season. Um, and, and, and that was his goals. first season at Sampdoria. Yeah, two goals for assists. It was his assist. first season. Two goals for assists. So it's not like he was like, bucketing output, was he? Not, no, but no, not, that's not to say he's a bad player. He's young. He's growing into himself. But like, if we, if we were to sign a player, for example who's already producing, then you then you pay a little extra because, look, this guy is already producing. Clearly, if we bring him in, there's more, he's more likely he's going to continue to do that for Spurs rather than someone like Damsgaard, who you're hoping will increase his output um, uh, if he does come to Spurs rather than a player who's already increasing their output. That, that's what I think. Do you feel, do you see why we're signing a Damsgaard and a Brian Hill in the same window or going for both of them in the same window? No, I, I wouldn't make much sense to me. Because they're both they're both naturally on the left. Yeah, they're both left players that come into the middle a bit. I mean, they do seem um, fairly similar. Similar um, ages. Similar ages, uh, similar style of play. Obviously, they've both got different attributes. We've already got um, Bergvine and Son who play on the left hand side as well. So, uh, do I? It doesn't. I think we have other. We should probably have other priorities. In all honesty, yeah, um, it doesn't make too much sense spending big money on two left young left wingers. Um, but having said that, maybe we can mould one of Hill or um, Damsgaard into a, a different position. On the right, in the middle. And or Damsgaard, I believe. I'm looking at me, but I believe he can definitely be a player who can play through the middle. Mm-hmm. More, 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 more likely than Hill, who are people who also say can play through the middle. Um, so maybe that's that would be a view of the changing his position or something. But um, for me, um, as much as I like Damsgaard, I think he's a good player. We've done this before, Tottenham, like... Even when, we, even when we signed like Bergvine, like we, we signed him for 27 million and he was like, okay, he's a good player, but like we desperately needed other positions. Striker. We needed that was a striker. It, striker. We needed, we, we need, we had other priorities. So it's like, it's remember at that time we were linked with so many strikers yeah, every day and there's a different striker and then we ended up with Bergvine. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, okay, you've got this player. Fair enough. You're, t- you're spending money on him, but like, 
why aren't you addressing the real issues? And that's why I feel like with this Damsgaard uh, deal, as much as I li- like him as a player, it's like, can we address the real issues first and get, then Damsgaard could be a nice cherry on top of the end. Unless someone like Lucas Moura, I know it's been reported that he's not, but unless someone like a Lu- Lucas Moura is going or we're getting rid of one of our other attacking players. Yeah. And I that guess. could also be a possibility. So I guess it's possible if we get an offer in. Have to wait and, uh, Obviously, nothing's been spoken about just yet, and all the noises coming out of the club is that Lucas Moura will be staying next summer, next season, and yeah. he will be a big player for us. But you never know what's happening behind closed doors, do you? Yeah, but then why? But if we're signing, um, if we're selling Lucas, is Damsgaard the perfect replacement for him? I don't know. I just think if look Damsgaard, I think he can definitely improve our creativity. That would be for sure, and it would be a good signing. I'd be happy with it if we signed him. It's just like. I've just we've seen this before with Tottenham where we make a, a signing in a, for a player where um f- where we don't exactly need mm-hmm. and then we then we leave other issues which we desperately need unattended. Yeah. And um that that's why I just hope we don't do that in this window and I'm I'm I'm, I'm fearful that we spend money big money on Damsgaard and then all of a sudden we're skimping out on player on players for positions we really really need. And all of a sudden, we're, 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 and then all of a sudden, we lose out on a player, for example, a top class right back or centre back that we desperately needed, because we wanted to spend an extra few million on a player for a position we is not an, is not essential. Yeah, and when you've got players on the market like Leon Bailey, who's just gone to Aston Villa for thirty million, and you're talking about signing a Mikel Damsgaard for around the similar price, you know, uh, on the right hand side of that attack, Leon Bailey, I mean, we could have really done with him. And to let him go for Aston Villa for £30 million, I think, is a big mistake, in my opinion. Bailey's a great player, and uh, they've got a very good player on their hands. Um, one who's got a serious left foot, can play on the right, can play on the left, could even play up front if need be, um, uh, on occasion. And uh, he's already producing for Bayer Leverkusen on a consistent basis. He's getting goals and assists fairly regularly. He can be a bit inconsistent, but by and large, is a very good player. And if you can get, you can get that consistency out of him, he's going to be a real, real um, top top signing for Villa, and uh, I would much rather have signed a Leon Bailey than a Hill or a um, Damsgaard personally, just because I think he's more ready made to come into the team now, and I think he's got um, right now there he's a better player, mm-hmm. and he's got a higher seat. He's not necessarily got a higher ceiling, but he's got um, he's got a higher um, skill set right now. So unfortunately, Villa has stumped us on that one. It looks like they're, they're obviously they've got their man already. And um, we're going to have to look elsewhere. But it's a frustration that uh, even though Villa, they're not in European football next season, but they're able to uh, beat us to players which we really should be looking at. Yeah. Um, Well, it's not even beat us because we didn't even like... uh even rumoured for him or even go for him but well, we should be going rumors. for him so I remember a lot was more last time wasn't it there was rumours that we were looking at him yeah but we never we never really ever got close exactly at all. exactly 